Bitcoin on the verge of making new all-time highs, and no one seems to give a fuck. <laughs> Seriously, no one seems to care at all. Uh, and probably that's a good thing. So I do want to be following up on this video as far as uh, pivots, important pivots for today's closures that would imply continuation or perhaps reversal as well. There always seems to be some on the other side. But in this case, you know, the higher term time frames are shaping up uh, to favor well, continuation as we've been looking for, maybe a little bit sooner than what we've been looking for. However, um, as uh, as the having is still, I don't know, about a week away now. Anyways, I should let you know that uh, Elsa wants you to know that she might be a little bit slow. She might be a little bit slow today, but also in general, because uh, I need to explain a situation that happened a few days ago. We were uh, we were we, 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 we were at the mall and uh, we went into the store and as we were leaving the store, there was a glass wall and then the exit door. And Elsa, instead of walking through the exit, walked into the uh, glass <laughs> somehow, somehow. <laughs> and like, I've watched this happen, by the way. <laughs> this was crazy. And then she just like falls over slowly. <laughs> Anyways, she hit her head, um, I guess, hard enough to where she must have like burst a blood vessel or something. And so we actually took her to the hospital and I don't know, she's probably dealing with like some sort of a minor concussion. All right, sweet. That's enough of that. Let's Let's get into some actual price action analysis right in over here. Starting off with the daily statistics for Friday. Friday is actually been the most likely to close positively out of any day um, since basically the start of uh, 2023. And actually, this has been pretty consistent now for uh, for many years. But out of all Fridays from the beginning of 2023, where this bull market really did start, 60.5% of them almost have closed positively from open to close with an average return of just over 2% which is actually not the biggest um, uh, uh, return for a positive day. That would actually be Monday. Um, and in the case that, you know, we do see lose, uh, losers on Fridays, you know, losing an average of about one and a half percent as well. So in this case, from the open of today, Friday, 2% to the upside would look like what? Would look like 71,500. Bitcoin's actually, you know, already put in a move kind of close to that region. And to the downside, if we were to see uh, to that to emerge, it'd be about one and a half percent would take Bitcoin back down about 69,000 bucks. I do want to say right at the get-go here that as long as Bitcoin is above Wednesday's low, upside is going to be generally what I'm looking for. If Bitcoin comes down and closes, especially below Wednesday's low, which is 67,500, same pivot as the couple days before, I would switch into, bearish is not the right term, but I would be looking for another swipe into the low $60,000 territory. Until that happens... I do believe that we've probably seen the lows of this move and that would be the good pivot point for, you know, as of right now. So that would be essentially, you know, failure, if you will. Um, also, I should I should actually just get into this because uh, I don't typically talk about volume. But in this case, we do see that volume is really starting to fall off right here. It doesn't really matter that volume is falling off. But what matters is, is that after the extreme, I wouldn't even call this exuberance, but after the um, after the explosion of volume that we did see on the 4th of March, we have seen it, you know, have this nice and orderly sort of um, consolidation here, which does also imply that price is maturing within its own consolidation and likely looking for resolution, you know, probably in this next week. Yeah, pro probably next week, I would say. Um, there's a high, high probability of that. Anyways, uh, moving on from there, I do want to also talk about this time frame as well, the two-day time frame, just because we're going to spend a little bit more time on this, um, especially when we get into the rest of these charts. But if I could load this damn thing, that'd be amazing. Come on, come on, range statistics. I'm working on another solution for this, by the way. Holy shit, this is like the longest ever taken ever. Maybe TradingView is, uh, is all derped up right now. Should we go to, you know what? <laughs> Let's come back to this one later. It's pissing me off, man. All right, TradingView, you've, you've done your last, you've done, you've done it for the last time, you bastard. All right, uh, two-day time frame over here for, uh, for CME. As we were looking at yesterday, CME did confirm the hidden bullish divergence between this low here on the 20th of March and the, uh, in the more recent low in early April. And in this case, uh, this really is starting to shape up to be a nice little sending derp, which again, it's just, a, it's just the markings of an uptrend. We have also seen that the jewel, or not the jewel, but the crown VMP, <laughs> still have to get used to calling it that, um, it's in the same area that I typically did have the jewel in. But in this case, uh, it has lost its downside curvature as of right now. And assuming that Monday, because this is CME after all, uh, basically closes anywhere here or higher, you know, we will see uh, very likely an upside signal emerge from this, uh, suggesting that momentum and volatility are going to start to turn in that direction as well. It's probably what you would look, be looking for 
in you know what is a rather mature formation in this case again whenever i'm talking about formations which i don't really talk about at all but especially in the ascending and descending varieties it's all about trend and in this case in ascending triangle it's just a fancy word for uptrend emerging i mean you have higher lows that's what creates this sort of aggressive boundary right here which is just you know people getting more more aggressive in their buying um with the same hives over here so the interpretation is that hey buyers getting more aggressive therefore upside resolution more likely fair enough um, and that's what we saw in the volume signature over here as well and holy shit it still isn't loaded so something must be going on with uh with trading view I, I suppose right now um anyways there is an implied move to be made from that if bitcoin does break and close above the current highs at seventy three thousand eight hundred on cme an implied target would be somewhere around 85 to eighty six thousand bucks fair enough i think a lot of people are probably looking at that as well so as you always know Usually those sort of things either get front ran or completely overshot. So <laughs> so what does that mean? Maybe low 80s or probably into the 90s. Um, anyways, moving on from there, I do want to, yeah, uh, I do want to get into not the monthly just yet or the bi-monthly just yet, but but starting off with daily stochastic momentum, we were looking at CME yesterday. We were looking at the, I think it was $69,000 pivot as the pivot, and that has now moved up to 70,000 bucks, meaning that as long as Bitcoin is above 70,000 bucks on today's closure, momentum will remain to the upside. Um, if Bitcoin, of course, comes back down below 70,000 bucks, I would not say that that's a death sentence just yet. It's still for me the wednesday the 10th of april's low that's where things start to you know really imply that bitcoin's going to come back down to like 62 maybe even sixty thousand bucks even um but for right now yeah you know still favoring the upside of course right here two-day time frame did not close the upside by the way last night the new pivot is seventy-one thousand nine hundred. again not gonna be relevant for tonight but on monday night's closure um which bitcoin's about 400 bucks as of uh, below as of right now um, on top of that i did also want to talk about the bi-monthly right here just because um the bi-monthly is going to be closing at the end of this month and there are uh, there is one major thing of interest here one well actually two i guess one is that <laughs> the stochastic momentum pivot probably going to continue to the upside uh i know it's like a really <laughs> really crazy call here but uh just needs to close above thirty one thousand three hundred fifty. okay not bad um but probably more importantly is what i have marked off with these green uh vertical bars which is where we've seen the stochastic oscillator essentially cross back above this moving average on it and in the past that has been indicative of general upside emerging for you know for quite some time um so uh, so in this case you know we're seeing our first sort of uh close actually our first closure will be this closure in fact yeah it will be this closure um so assuming that bitcoin you know doesn't come back down below like 30 what is it what was it thirty one thousand bucks it's probably gonna remain to the upside and again long term we likely uh, we likely see some some more long term upside emerge again. Just makes me more convicted in the overall analysis on this channel for the past couple of months now that, or not not couple of months, but like the past uh, couple of weeks now that Bitcoin's been consolidating at this region at seventy thousand bucks. That right now is monkey boy time. It's monkey boy time. Just sit on your damn monkey hands and you know, yeah, price might you know could theoretically come down. I don't know ten fifteen percent from where it currently is. Still be an opportunity. You know, take, uh, do with that as you will. It's just my opinion at the end of the day. Um, but, uh, but again, long term, more likely than not. More, long term upside, still more likely than not. Um, so, uh, so fair enough, right there. Um, also, I should say that uh, the bi monthly stochastic momentum cross to the downside is actually accurately called all of the to all of the previous tops in Bitcoin's history. So, unless if Bitcoin were to close this month below thirty one thousand three fifty. I would say uh, this top is still not in, <laughs> still more like the upside. Although as we went over in yesterday's video, I actually am starting to think that this current cycle does not likely go that far beyond, if at all, uh, 2024. Um, but we do see, you know, volatility starting to expand here for the first time, basically since the lows. And I'm generally going to be biased towards this move, um, continuing quite a bit, uh, in terms of, in terms of price. I mean, just based off of that, I mean, that is a vault that, I mean, that is what volatility implies just by the nature of volatility, uh, spurs of returns, of course. Anyways. Okay, cool. So we've gone through that. We've gone through that. Um, let's go over here now. Let's go into, uh, the two day time frame for the HPDR bands. My damn, uh, 
eye is uh, is itching me right now. Um, and again, not closing today, but a good pivot for the upside to be aware of that if Bitcoin were to be above, we're very likely going to look for a move at least into the deep 70s, probably even $80,000 territory, because it sounds kind of crazy to say right now, um, would be the median right here, which is 71800 Again, Bitcoin trading about 200 bucks. Yeah, two, uh, sorry, 300 bucks below that as of right now um, with, again, closing on Monday. So three days left to go. So big area to be mindful of. If Bitcoin starts to you know trade above that region, especially today or over the weekend, setting up for that Monday closure, it's going to be a damn good indication that at, ver at the very least we see the 38.2 level hit, which is 77,000 bucks. Personally speaking, I do think that we will see the 61.8 level hit as well. The reason why, and by the way, that is that is uh, just below 84,000 bucks. The reason why is because volatility is on extreme lows right here. So naturally, we would be looking for a relatively large expansion phase, or at least I would be, um, especially with HP or O seemingly about to pop back up into positive territory. But it is neutral right now, so technically speaking, that one can go either way. And by the same token, you know, again, if Bitcoin does come back down below Wednesday's lows, that's my cutoff region. That's that's where I really say, hey, uh, postpone the upside for a little bit of time. Very likely coming back down to very low 60,000, maybe even upper 50s before anything else. But for right now, as long as Bitcoin is above that, upside is going to be more likely and upside in the more immediate time frame is going to be more likely as well, actually. Um, so, yeah. And then also, of course, because today is the weekly closure um, for CME. Uh, it should be known that Bitcoin is going to have its chance to close back above the 61.8 level. And a lot of the time, you know, when we see something like that, Bitcoin at least tests the 78.6 after that, which is 76, almost 77,000 bucks as well. So I am leaning towards upside here again, just to put my, uh, put a little bit more conjecture on these thoughts. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, again, so assuming that today closed above 69,000 bucks, I, I should say, because today is Friday and it hasn't closed just yet. So 15 hours and one minute and 26 seconds left to go and counting. 69,000 bucks, assuming that Bitcoin's above there on CME specifically. Yeah, we're probably going to see next week or the week after that. Try closer to 77-ish, maybe even low 80s, and then take it one step as we go. Again, probably keeping in mind the long-term setups that we've been looking at for Bitcoin, um, which I won't talk about today, but you know, still kind of suggesting uh, just general upside into the end of uh, the end of May, uh, most likely. All right, cool. We spoke about that. We spoke about that. Let me bring it back up. The uh, the meta derps, the meta signals over here, just because they've they've been on fire recently. Um, again, they're not always going to work out. Fucking obviously, like Jesus Christ, who the hell needs to hear this? Um, but uh, but they have had just a ridiculous amount of winners in a row. Uh, we see. I mean, who the fuck is trading EOS on a on a forty five minute time frame? Not me, <laughs> but that one hitting the third target right there. Not bad. You got the same thing for Litecoin. I mean, who the hell watches Litecoin either? Or BAT <laughs> or Dash or ETC, Ethereum Classic. Um, you know, and at the end of the day, what do I what do I like about a service like this? Basically, it gives you a probabilistic setup. It says, hey, look, here you go. <laughs> there is a higher probability of this happening than that. Do with this information as you will. Here's maybe an area of interest that if met would indicate that this is not going to work out. That would be the stop loss, <laughs> in other words. Um, but ultimately, uh, this service is still available for lifetime purchase. And I'll, I'll keep on shilling it basically until that lifetime um, purchase option goes away. Uh, so you can find more information about that in the link in the description below. Um, if you're interested in such things. And other than that, I think that's a good place for me to be leaving off for today. I want to say, take care, much love, fuck you, and see you tomorrow.